Yet another problem on the board here. So I want to find the surface area of the portion of the sphere, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4. So that's the sphere centered at the origin of radius 2. I want to find the surface area of the part that lies above the plane z equals 1. Okay. Now, with any of these videos, and I should have said this in the last example, once I've stated the problem, if you want to pause the video and try it on your own, I'd encourage you to do that. And there will be times, like right now, where I'm going to say I really do encourage you specifically on this problem to do that because we've seen um, all of the um, theory that we need for doing this. I will tell you that there are some tricks with the integration that we may or you may not or may not be familiar with. Um, just little little gimmicky tricks, um, not that it's a super hard integral. Uh, but I'd encourage you to try it out and then tune back in, see how you did. Okay. All right. I like to have a picture of what's going on, at least a mental picture. It's not absolutely necessary that you draw everything that you're going to do. But I know what a sphere looks like, and I know a plane of z, height z equals 1 is just going to cut through it like so. I'm going to just draw a line and let that represent the plane that's coming straight out from the board. I'm trying to find this portion of the surface area. Okay, so in order to do that, I'm going to need to do a couple of things. First of all, this doesn't give me z as a function of x and y. So I need to take that equation, and I need to solve for z as a function of x and y. So I know z squared is 4 minus x squared minus y squared. That actually gives me z as one of two functions of x and y. z would be plus or minus the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared. But I know I'm looking for the part that lies above the plane z equals 1 which tells me that z is going to be positive. Okay, excellent. And then I want to see what's the region in the xy plane over which I'm integrating. Well, what I need to do is see where this intersects the plane z equals 1. That's going to be in some circle. And if I drop that circle onto the xy plane and fill it in, that disk is going to be the region in the xy plane over which I'm integrating, I just would like to know what's the radius of that disk. So I'm going to set the z value on the sphere, which we've just determined is 4 minus x squared minus y squared, equal to the z value on the plane, and let's solve. So if I square both sides, I get 4 minus x squared minus y squared equals 1. I'm going to subtract over the 1 and add over the x's and the y's, so I get 3 is equal to x squared plus y squared. That tells me that we're working on a disk whose radius is root 3. So that's going to be the region D over which I'm going to be doing my integrals. Okay, fabulous. Now, this formula for z as a function of x and y is also what's going to allow me to get my partial derivative. So I'm just going to rewrite this as 4 minus x squared minus y squared to the 1 half. And then the partial of z with respect to x, it's going to be 1 half, 4 minus x squared minus y squared to the negative 1 half, chain rule, times a negative 2x. Now I can cancel those 2's, and I'm just going to rewrite that as negative x over root 4 minus x squared minus y squared. So the negative fractional exponent tells me it's a root in the denominator. Okay. By a similar argument, the partial of z with respect to y is 1 half, 4 minus x squared minus y squared to the negative 1 half, chain rule times a 2y, and I can rewrite that as negative y over root 4 minus x squared minus y squared. Okay, looking good. So let's set up our integral. So we're going to have the double integral over d of the square root of 1 plus. I'm going to take the partial of z with respect to x and square it. When I square that, the negative sign on top goes away. It just becomes x squared. And on bottom, we just lift the radical. So the denominator is 4 minus x squared minus y squared. Plus, I need to do the same thing with the partial with respect to y. So when I square that, in a similar way, negative y squared just becomes y squared, and we lift the radical on the bottom. That's what we're integrating with respect to area. 
And at this point, once we've got it set up, I want to switch to polar. Don't want to switch to polar before then, because the formula involves the partials with respect to x and with respect to y, not the partials with respect to r and theta. Those geometrically mean something very different. <laughs> All right, so if we're switching to polar, theta is going from 0 to 2 pi, r is going from 0 to root 3, because remember we said we were integrating over the disk of radius root 3. Okay. And let's see, actually, before I switch to polar, I'm going to just make an observation here. Ah. Which is that those two fractions have the same denominator. So that's x squared plus y squared over 4 minus the quantity x squared plus y squared. So if I combine them, I get an x squared plus y squared. And if I factor out the negative, I get an x squared plus y squared. I kind of like that when I'm switching to polar, because that's an r squared. So now let's switch. 0 to 2 pi, 0 to root 3. Square root of 1 plus, writing this as one fraction, it's just r squared over 4 minus r squared. And then dA, remember, is r dr d theta. Okay, so here's a point where when I have an integrand like this that's a square root of a sum of some stuff, and part of it's a fraction and part of it's not, it's generally going to be easier if you combine to get one fraction. So I'm going to rewrite this as the integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral from 0 to root 3. Just write that 1 as 4 minus r squared over 4 minus r squared, and then I'm adding the r squared over 4 minus r squared, r d r d theta. And that's nice, because 4 minus r squared plus r squared is just 4. So this becomes the integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral from 0 to root 3, square root of 4 over 4 minus r squared, d r d theta. And you might be saying, I wouldn't have thought of that. Or maybe you paused the video and you didn't think of that, so you turned the video back on to see how you would go about integrating something like that. That's why you're taking the class. Okay. I don't expect that everybody's going to think of that the first time they see something like that. You may have encountered integrals like this in the past, in which case hopefully you remembered this trick. Now you're going to add it to your bag of tricks so that you know when you've got messy stuff under a, a radical, if part of it's a fraction, make the whole thing a fraction. All right, I can simplify the square root of 4. Remember, square roots distribute over division. So I can say this is the integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral from 0 to root 3, of just 2, which is the square root of 4, over root 4 minus r squared dr d theta. I think it's time for a u sub. What happened to my r? Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, as I copied things over here, I dropped the r. It's still there. That's very important. If it wasn't there, the u sub wouldn't work. Now the u sub's going to work. Let's let u equal 4 minus r squared. du is negative 2r dr. So I need a negative 2. We'll throw one in, counterbalanced with a negative 1 half. OK, so we've got negative 1 half, integral from 0 to 2 pi integral from the u value at 0 is 4 minus 0 squared, that's 4, to the u value at root 3 is 4 minus root 3 squared, that's 4 minus 3, that's 1. I'm feeling better. I know I'm finding surface area, so I've got to be getting a positive answer. I had a negative in front, but now these limits of integration look backwards. I'm integrating from the bigger value to the smaller value. If I wanted to, I could absorb that negative sign and switch them back to 1 to 4. I think I'm going to just leave them as they are, but that's going to introduce a negative right there, and that'll cancel with the other, which is lovely. Okay, so let's see. This negative 2 and the r dr are part of my du, but I still have the 2 on top over the square root of u, and then it's du d theta. Let's cancel those 2s. That's kind of nice. And I'm running short on space, so I'm just going to move back over to this side of the board. And before I integrate, I'm just going to rewrite that as a fractional power. 
So we will have negative integral 0 to 2 pi, integral 0 to root 3. This is going to become u to the negative 1 half du d theta. So negative integral from, I'm sorry, it's not no longer 0 to root 3. It's now 4 to 3. We changed those limits of integration. Oh, my bad. OK, so integral from 0 to 2 pi. This is going to become 2u to the 1 half evaluated between 3 and 4. And then we still have to integrate with respect to theta. So that's going to be negative, the integral from 0 to 2 pi. 2 times 3 to the 1 half is just root 3. Minus 2 times 4 to the 1 half is the square root of 4, which is 2. <laughs> and this is what we need to integrate, d theta. So let's see, that's negative integral 0 to 2 pi, 2 root 3 minus 4, d theta. <laughs> and that's just a constant. So if that's a constant, I know I'm just going to get that constant times the length of this interval. So we've got negative, that constant is 2 root 3 minus 4, times the length of our interval was 2 pi. And I think what I'll do is just distribute this negative. That's going to just reverse the order of that subtraction. So 4 minus 2 root 3 times the quantity 2 pi. Which I can distribute, so we get 8 pi minus 4 pi root 3. And that is a positive number because 4 is bigger than 2 root 3. Root 3 is smaller than 2. All right, that was a fun example.